I guess this means I can afford to set up this cutaway with a fancy new transition. Cutaway! And the cutaway! This is what's referred to in media as a cutaway. It's a piece of a show or film designed to remove the viewer from the current reality of a scene and provide some context or even a joke in support of the narrative. This is a particularly bad cutaway. I recently read a piece by Brad Parton titled How Family Guy Gets the Comedic Cutaway So Wrong and it got me thinking. What would happen if you laid out Family Guy's cutaways in numbers? Would you be able to see a trend, a correlation between anything that's happening to Family Guy now and what it used to be? Would the numbers reveal where and how Family Guy went from one of the most beloved shows on television to one of the most criticized? Is there anything they can teach us about this show? So I did just that, and the answer is a resounding yes to each and every one of those questions. Right? Right? Yes. Family Guy's cutaways aren't just some small supplemental part of the show. A lot of fans cite them as the villainous pieces of narrative humor that have all but swallowed up the show over the last half decade. There's a reason it's so easy to think this. 2,517. That's how many cutaways there are across every single episode of Family Guy. Let that sink in for a second. 2,517. For perspective, if we give them all an average length of 15 seconds, and it's probably around or longer than that, but if we attribute that particular length to them, that's over 10 hours of cutaways. Longer than the runtime of an entire season of the show. And this is what they look like across each season. This is the amount of cutaways per season visualized on a graph. The lowest being season 1 with 57 cutaways, and the highest being 303 in season 4. But what's immediately obvious here is two things. The longer Family Guy runs, the more cutaways begin to pop up, with the later seasons being filled to the brim with them. But there's this gully, it's right here in the middle. Why does that exist? Well, it's this area that shows a clear correlation between cutaways and the decline of the show. To understand why this area is so important, we have to break the numbers down further. Everybody gets one. This graph visualizes the number of cutaways per episode per season. This accounts for outliers like the 7 episode season 1 with 57 cutaways and the 30 episode season 4, and suddenly the correlation becomes more clear. What we see again is the longer Family Guy has been on TV, the more reliant the writers have become on the cutaways until the most recent seasons. They peak in season 11 at almost 11 cutaways per episode, that is one every single two minutes, and hover at this peak for five seasons between seasons 10 and 15. Oh my god, who the hell cares? Well, apparently we do. I think to understand what comes next, we need to understand why they're being used the way they are. Co-showrunner Rich Apple recently said something so important and yet so obvious that it actually explains the state of the show in isolation of any other context. He said, the cutaways, and I quote, have become an easy way for the show to stay current. He goes on to say that the cutaways allow them to splice in modern hot topics to be like a sketch news show, similar to SNL or John Oliver. So. Remember that gully I mentioned here? This is when Family Guy's ratings were the most stable. See, after being unofficially cancelled two seasons in, and then officially cancelled after season three, the show had come back, had a few successful seasons, and had officially become a hit around this time. And during this time of rating stability, the amount of cutaways stayed relatively even and relatively low. And there's a reason. This right here visualizes Family Guy's ratings per season using view numbers. Remember that stability we talked about? Yep, it's right here. Stable, just like the other graph. But here's what happens when Family Guy starts to introduce more cutaways in an attempt to stay topical and be within the news cycle. The cutaways go up, and the ratings visibly go down. As the writers began to overuse the tool, people began to stop watching. Coincidence? Probably not. For the last nine seasons, Family Guy has gone down in ratings, going from an average base of viewership around 8 million an episode down to 3.3 million. That's a huge drop, but a steady one. So here's what I think these numbers can tell us. 
As the writers keep saying the cutaways are great for the show, Family Guy's identity, meanwhile, is swallowed whole by a gimmick that introduced a culture of narrative laziness. This period of rating stability gave rise to a comfort that you can see in each episode. The show is still trying to maintain its identity, to retain a focus on character and again narrative. This may not be the golden era of content for the show, but there were still stories to tell and the characters still felt at least a little fresh. And then season 10 on is what happens when a show goes on for too long. When writers are forced to stay modern a decade after a show begins, when a show outlives its own comedy and fatigue hits, but they've already established a getaway car. Family Guy slowly turned into that sketch comedy show, intentionally so apparently, as opposed to refining the revolution of the family sitcom it had originated as. The joke became that Peter was telling a joke, instead of being a part of it. All right, you guys wanna hear it? All right. In an attempt to keep Peter hip, here's a Stranger Things reference. In an attempt to stay current, here's more Kanye. Family Guy once had the confidence to let their voice be heard when it made sense. Now, they're chasing down their viewers screaming, don't forget about me, all while utilizing just one tool. Those characters simply ran out of things to say, and the show kept screaming. These cutaways became a crutch. They no longer had to work modern culture into the narrative, they could just cut to it. They no longer had to tell topical stories, they could just splice them in. But how big of a problem is this for the show? Have people really stopped caring? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> As I was gathering these numbers, I thought maybe people are just watching less TV. And while that is true, what's clear is when people care, they watch. This here is the last 10 Super Bowls. Ratings have actually gone up on average. Here's the last 10 seasons of Family Guy in comparison. Sure, streaming has a bit to do with it, but it's not telling the whole story. And what's even clearer and worth pointing out is that the writers seem to know people have grown tired of the shtick. They seem to understand that cutaways are now killing quality, and so the last three seasons have seen a rapid decrease in their usage, seemingly in direct response to the drop in ratings, and unsurprisingly, when they decreased the amount of cutaways, they slowed their ratings decline pretty dramatically. It's pretty hard to deny the correlation these numbers present, even if the writers don't want you to know it. And in perfect Family Guy fashion, this guy, Conway Twitty, is part of the problem. It's plain to see that you... Look, the underlying thesis here isn't groundbreaking. Anyone that's watched the show has come to these conclusions anecdotally. But it's very interesting to see them corroborated with the numbers the way they are here, in a way I wasn't sure they would. This pointless Conway Twitty cutaway on your screen goes on for over two minutes. The joke is supposed to be, well, that it goes on for two minutes. But it isn't funny for two minutes. It's barely funny for one. We as human beings only laugh so long before the joke gets old. Humor isn't just subjective, it has a shelf life, and eventually it goes bad. And when Family Guys did, they turned to the easiest way to keep making people laugh. They turned to the proverbial whoopee cushion. But it was easy for a reason, and maybe the cutaways cut right through what once made the show great. A good joke, even the best joke, leaves an impression and then leaves altogether. A punchline is defined as the final line of a joke that provides the humor. And Family Guy is still funny, it's still a good show, it isn't as bad as the internet wants you to believe at all. But what if Family Guy's punchline landed 10 years ago? What if no amount of cutaways can keep the Griffins young or hip or relevant? Maybe it told its joke and just wants to go home. Funny isn't meant to last forever. Maybe it's time we close the door on the Griffins and move on from 31 Spooner Street for good. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Conway Twitty. Hey! Shut up! That is a wrap on today's episode of Nerdstalgic. I want to make one thing abundantly clear. I actually still like Family Guy. I think the show's still got some charm and is still good for a few laughs, but these things kind of couldn't be denied. But if you enjoyed this video, press the like button. If you have not yet done so, press subscribe. That way you won't miss any uploads to this channel. And also hit the little bell next to the subscribe button that just makes sure, as always, you are notified when the episodes actually come out. So press subscribe and the little bell. And as always on your screen right now are two more episodes of Nerdstalgia. You can click on either of those to see more from me and this channel. And I will hopefully see you guys in the next video.